Hey everyone, welcome to another Goody Reader comparison video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we have the Sony Digital Paper, otherwise known as the DPT-S1. It's a 13.3 inch screen. And we have the Microsoft Surface 3, which is a 12 inch screen. So not much of a difference in terms of overall screen size. The premise of today's video is to look at the overall note taking experience, PDF viewing and editing experience just to give you a sense on what these two devices are capable of. It's been a very popular request to do this video so we hope by the end of it you'll get a good indication on which device is right for you. So we are on the note taking app on the Sony digital paper here. As you can see it's gridded and there's lines and we're on the note taking app as well on the Microsoft Surface. So Peter, what tell us a little bit about the Surface and what it's capable of? This is the default app called OneNote and uh, what it is is just a very simple drawing application. So um, you can actually rest your hand and your palm on the screen because your fingers can't allow it to write. So you can essentially go like this, draw and then you have your um, additional options up there for different pen sizes. So we have four different pen presets. So what you can do is choose pen one will be, let's say thick red, and then pen two will be, I like the black one. We'll go pen three, we'll do a medium yellow, and then you can switch between all these just by clicking that each time. Okay, so you can draw, but what about writing? How does writing function? So we're going to choose our black and we'll move the page up and we'll start writing. Hey! Okay, with the Sony Digital Paper you have some presets here in terms of pen, like the thickness of the line. So you have ultra thin, normal, and thick. So I'm going to pick thick and the same thing. You can rest your mm. palm on it and you could write. Okay. How about that? And then, um, you know, you could delete it by mm -hmm. clicking the eraser button and you could either swipe mm -hmm. over a particular word just tap on or you could just scribble mm -hmm. and it'll delete it. On the surface, it's a lot easier. You don't have to actually open any sort of eraser option. You simply click the first button, press and hold and you can erase. So if you draw a circle and you say, oh, I don't like that, you just erase it immediately and then go back to draw. Okay, with this you could actually take notes as well. So I could draw a note and then click save. Or I can make a little chat box say on the word the and then take advantage of the virtual keyboard. And the keyboard you can use the pen or your fingertip. And so this is a good time to check out the two keyboards. Oh, right. So you can click on that note anytime and you can actually bring up, you can save a bunch of these and you can bring them up anytime. So the keyboard on the Sony, because it's actually a wider, lot more screen real estate width wise, the keys end up being full finger width, whereas these are a little bit compressed. But of course you get more options with these like multiple languages and all that kind of stuff. Kind of weird symbols mm -hmm, and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Okay, so we've looked at the note taking experience just to kind of give you a sense on what this is all about. Now, when you take notes, you can actually save these notes as PDF files. You, when you take notes on this, you could uh, get them sent to your One SkyDrive right. uh, directory, yeah. to your documents folder, or you could even view them within the Internet Explorer web browser. Mm -hmm. But these don't actually save as individual files that you can drag and drop to a USB stick, send them to people. It's in a, um, it's kind of like an internet shortcut to your SkyDrive or your OneDrive. Okay, great. So let's look at 
opening up like a PDF file. So we'll have to swipe down on this to go to the home, but we're just gonna go to our desktop. So we have the same PDF document opened on both units here. Yes. And you can see just from the get-go, I mean, it looks pretty respectable with full color, mm -hmm. although you do notice a black border. That's because it can't really fit on this page because it's fitting to width, and if it was to fit to height, you'd see you get a lot of stuff that's chopped off. So. Well, whereas with the Sony, you get the full document top from bottom. There's, exactly. no, there's no really border other than the UI at mm -hmm. the top, which is pretty important for navigation. Right. Whereas with the Surface, if you want navigation, often you have to swipe mm -hmm. from the bottom upwards. Exactly. So there are some functionalities that you can do on both of these units. But before we do that, let's look at the pen technology because I think that this is using Entrig, which is an Israeli company, mm -hmm. and Microsoft chose this pen because it eliminated one of the extra touch sensor layers on the Surface tablet, which basically does a lot of important things behind the scenes, geek speak, but we're gonna look at the pen itself. The pen has two buttons. The first one in most applications is always going to be erase. The second one in most applications will always be select. Kind of like when you select things in Paint or Adobe Photoshop. The back button is pretty much stuck to one note. So even if I'm in, I'm in this app, which is Reader, and I press that, it cancels out of my app and goes to OneNote to start a new note. So that's kind of a weird setup that they keep that consistent with that. The nibs are plastic, unlike the Sony's nibs that wear out. So um, you won't have to replace these ones, but the Sony actually does come with three extra pens. Last thing I wanna mention, this is utilizing a quadruple A battery, meaning that this is powered and it will run out of batteries if you let it die. This on the other hand is the Sony pen. This is the official Sony DPTS-1 pen used sp specifically with the digital paper. This does not have any batteries, but it does have communication with this device because you can't use it on anything else, but you can use it on the DPTS-1. And if you press this button, if you don't press the button, you write. If you do press the button, you highlight. So it is communicating with this device specifically without any power. Okay. Quite amazing. So I think that, you know, if we just turn a page here, I really like the reading experience on both of these. Mm -hmm. One of the advantages mm -hmm. that ePaper has over, say, the Microsoft Surface is this will last you about a good month mm -hmm. of constant use, whereas this... Probably 12 hours before it's dead. Yeah. I mean, the, the, and this thing, while anything's running, the fan is just revving constantly and you can hear it. So, no, this will last nowhere near as long as the digital paper. And this is primarily because with e-paper, it's actually not drawing power when there's when it's just sitting exactly. here as it is. This is the last known state of the screen. Whereas with uh, the Microsoft Surface 3, it's basically a computer. There's a lot of things happening behind the scenes. It's checking for Adobe updates. Mm -hmm. It's checking for Microsoft updates. It's checking for Flash updates. And you, you can't know. notice right now, but it is refreshing 30 to 60 times a second. Right. So now that we've looked at the PDF uh, experience here overall, what are the different things that we can use to augment it? Well, it's more or less the same types of things that we could do when we take a note, where we could highlight specific, we could circle mm -hmm. specific things, we could say, okay, you know, the stone eye basilisk tactics. Mm -hmm. Wanna make a note with that guy? Right. There you go. So I could take a note. This is boss and click save. Any edits I do here, whether it's with, you know, highlights or anything like that, this will actually be saved in the PDF mm -hmm. if I save the document, which is fairly cool. What can we do with this? So you have the writing capability, of course. You can erase with that button that I spoke of earlier. You can move over to your finger to type, to tap things to start making highlights. Notes, add a note. Hi. Uh, so that, that is now noted. You can click on something and highlight it. If you zoom out, you actually get this gridded view, which is really nice because the, because these are rocking such very large screens, it has the ability to show you four things at once like this. You can then select the one you want to go to. And it works the other way too. You can zoom in. So. 
just got to be really careful on this because it is running e-ink it's a lot slower as you can see this is a lot slower so take your time with it it is a full 13 inch screen running e-ink but look at the quality once it's really close like that all right, so we showed some basic functionality with being able to take the odd note and highlight and things like that. Now, you could actually save this document mm -hmm. and you could preserve the changes that you did. But with the Surface, it's reliant a lot on third-party programs right. to maximize your efficiency. So let's open up Adobe Acrobat because this is a cool program that could really allow you to make changes more on the fly. So right. we could do things like add text, add images. You can't draw text on here right. because this app is an app that was designed for, you know, Windows 7, exactly. Windows 8. It's, it wasn't designed with the pen in mind. So you can't really do handwritten notes like we demonstrated in, in OneNote or the Microsoft Reader app. But still, you can do some pretty cool things. You can move text around. You could actually see what type of fonts mm -hmm. that they're using. Full font capabilities because uh, the pen's not working for a good reason because it's pretty much acting as a mouse would right now. It's not. It's not an app specifically designed for this pen. It'll just act like if you were pointing a mouse at it. So that's what that is right there. Of course, you can do sticky notes, highlight with text and things like that. So same thing. And then you can raise the keyboard. And much like the Sony digital paper, any edits that you do within this document, you can actually save it as mm -hmm. an independent PDF. So there's a lot of similarities in terms of anything you edit here and save as a PDF and, and anything that you edit pretty well with the stock Microsoft programs, but we downloaded Acrobat as a third party tool just to give you a little bit of contrast on how different programs allow you to do different things. And when it comes down to it, I really like the Sony for PDF. It's you, you notice with the Surface 3, we opened up three different apps to do three different things. Right. With this, it's sort of like one interface. All in one. Yeah, exactly. The way that you take notes and, and make highlights and adjustments is the same when you're viewing a PDF as, as when you're making mm -hmm. a note from yes, scratch. exactly. And I really do dig the fact that when you make changes with this, it changes the document that you're reading. You don't actually really even have to save it in most cases. It'll just auto save. Yes. And I like the fact that it has tremendously long battery life. When it comes down to it, this is designed for one task. It's to read PDFs and to make notes. The Surface 3 was designed not only to do that, but also to check your email, to make Skype calls, to play StarCraft if you wanted to. It is a PC. It's a personal computer, first and foremost. It's a solid state tablet slash laptop hybrid. You have things you can get like keyboards and all that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, as it stands with this particular model with a keyboard, this is the 128 gig pro. It's about $1,400. This is about $1,200. They're pretty much on the same scale in terms of cost, but this is very limiting. This is more expensive because of the technology uses 13.3 inch flexible Mobius e-ink versus a standard LCD LED screen. So this is more of a prototype come to life first generation. And this is a refined overall readily available consumer yeah, products. It's a third generation. Exactly. So it, it's it's fairly polished. Of course, if you want to learn more about the Microsoft Surface 3 in the coming weeks, we'll be doing extensive hands-on reviews, tests. We'll be comparing it against other popular tablets on the market, such as the iPad Air and the Amazon Kindle Fire HDX 8.9. So if you want to see how the e-reading experience, how, what our impressions of it overall is, keep your browsers locked mm -hmm. to youtube.com slash goodyreader. And tell us what you think about this video. Which which device do you prefer yes. for the PDFs, whether it's uh, annotations, whether it's note-taking, editing, and, and overall PDF flexibility? Drop a comment below for goodyreader.com. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Everybody take care. Have the box. We'll put it in the box. We'll give you the charger. We'll give you the USB cable. Give you the manual. Give you the retail packaging. And we'll send it right to you for free. What do you got to do? Same thing as usual. You got to watch our video. You gotta like our video, you gotta subscribe to our channel, and you gotta leave a comment. 
you have to leave a comment because it's just a nice thing to do, okay? You can't just expect to watch our video and we just kind of hand it to you. You gotta at least participate. You gotta say, hey, you know, thanks everybody. Thanks, Goody Reader. You're the best ever, you know, like what most people do. And, you know, it's, 